Stevenson for Press Plus One. Very happy to be joined by Josh Jensen and Andrew Smith of The Scene, which we'll be screening later tonight. Uh, we already talked about this, but it's something I want to bring up again, and you actually, I think, wrote a blog post about it. It's this idea that, you know, you're covering musicians who are more or less starving artists. They're trying their best just to make it. They're working full-time jobs, but they still want to you know, go after their passion. But at the same time, you guys are a parallel to that because you're just getting started in this business of filmmaking and you're trying your best to make everything happen. Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, definitely, it only got done because Josh and I wanted to get it done. There was no one else, you know, pushing us. It was something we wanted to and something we wanted to do for a long time. So as we're interviewing these artists, talking to these artists about the struggles they have to go through, you know, recording by themselves, promoting all their own shows. We're slowly starting to realize all these parallels between uh, filmmakers doing the same thing. So, you know, funding their own projects, trying to hustle people to get it to come to the screenings. Uh, the, no shortage of parallels, certainly. Right. So are there concessions, you know, that you have to make in order to try and get your film done on a low budget? <laughs> there, yeah, there's always concessions to be made, whether it's a big budget or a low budget. But certainly when you're working on a no budget, um, you do have to kind of realize that you're not going to have a professional color timer or professional sound mixer. That was us. We, we did the, all the graphics, all the sound design, all the, you know, all the color correction. It's all us. Um, obviously, we had a crew, we had a couple, a few camera people on call um, to help us out when we were actually shooting the thing, but in terms of post-production, like, that's expensive. It's really expensive, and, and there's favors here and there, but for the most part, we just kind of, you know, hit the tutorials online, watch a bunch of videos, and see if we can do it ourselves, and, and so it's very much a DIY process, just like, you know, the Ruby Spirit, they did their own album art, all that kind of stuff. It felt very familiar, and maybe we'll do a sequel and turn the cameras on ourselves. Who knows? And so that's a good point that you allude to, you know, because everything's changed so much with the fact that you can get affordable software and computers now. It's not like you have to be in the studio literally taping film together. You did the editing. Uh, you know, how important is it, and, and how much easier is it actually for you to get a film done like this now versus maybe, say, 10 years ago when the equipment wasn't as readily available? Certainly, shooting on digital and editing, non-linear editing Final Cut Pro, it, it makes it all a lot easier. Uh, sort of the, the flip side to that, though, is it, it, it makes it more accessible to everyone and maybe accessible to people whom it shouldn't be accessible to necessarily. So Josh and I really you know, wanted to make sure that it looked good and it sounded good, and I think that's a testament to the crew that we had, the camera operators, David Killing, uh, sorry, uh, Dave Coiter and Adam Brandon, and then our DOP, David Killing, who was fantastic. Like, we really wanted to make it stand out as much as we could from the other uh, no-budget projects. Another parallel to the music industry, of course, because when you lower the bar, everyone jumps in, and the good rises and the not-so-good sinks, so hopefully we are... <laughs> Rising, <laughs> rising One like show. a phoenix. So, but that's another good point, you know, and I love that you brought that up, especially for anyone who's trying to make it in the film business, who's just getting going. You admit to going online and, and doing tutorials. Yeah. Josh gave it away, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's necessary. You, you, you know, we don't have the training in all of these fields, you know, so we have to go online, we have to find people who are experts and just do the very best we can. Um, so yeah, that's just, that's the reality of it. We, we don't have a lot of money, but we do have evenings and weekends to learn. <laughs> so that's, that's, how, that's how it came together. I want to stay on that point of like putting yourself out there. And we were talking just before this, you know, of going after big names, trying to get them in your film. So, you know, one person that a lot of people would recognize would be Biff Naked. How do you get somebody like that to be on a film when you haven't done anything before? Yeah, well, Biff, Biff Naked was fantastic. I, I felt like that, that was our best produced yeah. interview and that was right at the end so at that point we'd had Rick Emmett we'd had Tokyo Police Club we'd had Anvil and it was basically a matter of seeing that she was in town getting in touch and just having it all fall into place and but name, drop name dropping helps too once you've had a few interviews behind you can say you know we're obviously trustworthy enough we spoke with Rick Emmett and Tokyo Police Club and Sal Costa or whoever it is that you can say okay well these people must have some sort of legitimacy maybe it's worth giving them 20 minutes to talk Right. And that's something that I wanted to talk about too, because obviously now you've got this one under your belt. And how important is it to have met people, have done that networking? Because I'm assuming you're not just going to quit <laughs> and, and call that, uh, you know, your life in the film industry. You're going to go on to future projects. How important, even in the Canadian film industry, which is a smaller niche, uh, especially here in Toronto, how important is it to make contacts to be able to, to make the next project? 
It's it's 100 necessary. Like uh, it is, like most businesses or, or most industries, it's who you know in a lot of ways. I mean, certainly we're totally independent. We did it ourselves and that sort of thing. But now we're starting to meet people, and we've obviously met a bunch of musicians and um, people in PR and people in different fields that now are aware of us. So that if we go and approach them again, they'll probably be even more open to us than they were even the first time. Um, so yeah, certainly who you know is extremely important. You do have to get out there and meet people and network and get on social media, just like the bands, again, like we're talking, you know, it's all these parallels again. You have to get on social media, you have to get your name out there and talk to people and go to events and all that kind of stuff to get, get your brand out there. At Jensen Actual, at Andrew Edits, so how many people do you meet even through social media? Like, do you have connections that you've met through social media who you've never met face to face? Certainly, and then it's always sort of weird when you finally do meet them, and it's like it's this weird thing. But yeah. Josh is definitely the expert in that regard. I will admit to not being quite as good <laughs> at it as Mr. Jensen is. He's the father of the scene social media. That is correct. You might say he does it professionally. In a way, I do. In a way, I do. I, I work in a production studio, and, and part of my job is to do run a social run run the social media campaigns uh, for a web series called Guidestones. So. It's sort of my it background. You might be familiar <laughs> with it. Uh, so yeah, so it was it was extremely important because we knew we, again we don't have a budget. Whatever's free, we just have to exploit it to its fullest potential. And so social media, Twitter, Facebook, that's the way to go. Got to plug Press Plus One for a second because I'm pretty sure you can see quite a bit of information on Guidestones on the website. Yeah. Uh, we also couldn't go. <laughs> we also couldn't go the rest of this interview without mentioning Belleville. And that's no offense to Mississauga, which okay. is where Andrew's from. Uh, but I'm part of the committee for Belleville's Downtown Doc Fest, an international documentary festival that's now in its second year in Belleville. You guys premiered the scene there. Josh, you grew up in Belleville. Yeah. What was it like to bring the scene to a hometown crowd? It was, it was unbelievable to have a, the world premiere of my first feature in Belleville. Um, it's, it was my sort of 10 year re, you know, anniversary reunion from graduating from high school as well. So it was just even more kind of you know, special. Um, but yeah, to come home and, and, you know, have family and friends to come out for my, my first, you know, big screening um, was a dream come true. It was fantastic. And, you know, I love my hometown. I love going back. You know, all of my family is still there. I go see my grandparents in the county whenever I can. And um, yeah, just it was nice to go home and to kind of feel comfortable in a crowd and, and get it on screen for the first time. And great questions afterwards and, and really kind of made us feel comfortable coming to Toronto with it. You know what I mean? We had to get that under our belt. It was a great time. You're just making me feel good because I did the Q&A, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but now we're in Toronto. We're here for the Canadian Film Festival. Obviously, you know, a bigger venue. <laughs> uh, how does that feel? It's fantastic. The screen is big. The theater is big. Uh, it has marquee out front. It's very exciting. There's lineups. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a dream that I've been thinking about every day since I was 18. So it's very exciting and hopefully all goes well. <laughs> I want to touch on one more thing before I let you go. We were having a casual conversation when you were in Belleville screening DocFest, and you had said that in conversations, you know, around the city, uh, people were going, oh, whoa, you finished? You finished your project? That's awesome. Yeah. You know, how many, how important is it to finish? Because let's face it, there's, there are a lot of people who take on a project but might not finish. How difficult is it to finish and how important is it to finish? Well, I, I hope that this is, our film is sort of a testament to the fact that you don't need a pile of money um, to finish a film. You, you can do it yourself. If you because you guys funded the whole thing. Yeah, I'll complete out of pocket. Um, not very much, because we don't have very much. Um, but it is important to actually, if you commit to it, finish it. Um, because it's worth it. You know, it's, it's going to be difficult. You're going to have all kinds of technical issues. It's going to happen. Um, but you don't need a ton of money. You don't need a bunch of PR or, or, or experts of every field. You can go out and you can make a movie for very little money and end up at the Canadian Film Fest. Cool. I like it. So obviously we, t we touched on social media. You guys are all over Twitter. Um, but where do we go for more information on the web? Uh, you can go to www.thescenedoc.com.